to look inside the trunk here. As you can see, I still have a trunk. I have, I have space to carry things in, uh, for quick trips to the grocery or whatever, so that was important. That was an important design feature that I wanted to incorporate. Uh, the first thing I'd like to point out is the, is the box in the back of the uh, trunk there. Originally, there was a bulkhead that separated the gas tank from the interior of the trunk and once I removed the gas tank I, I was able to cut through that bulkhead and I thought well this would be a great way to actually use some of that space so I had this box built and it's cantilevered into that space and supported on the other side there's also air forced into it to make sure that these components get plenty of, uh, of fresh air so that they remain cool now the two components that you see over here these are the DC to DC converters now those are supposed to be able to deliver 55 amps uh, each, but uh, in truth what people have found is they really only can deliver about 45 sustained, maybe 55 peak. But the problem is is that the power steering pump can actually draw up to 85 amps on a hard lock, so clearly one of those wasn't going to cut it. So what I did is I got two and I wired them in parallel, so together they, they both put out uh, a combined 90 amps uh, if necessary so that uh, uh, that was important to uh, to the system to make sure that the 12 volt system is uh, is adequately charged but in, in addition to that I also have a, a, a lead acid battery over here it's one of the gel kind of batteries it's quite small and in the event that the main pack dies and those two aren't providing any power I have this little 12 volt battery here that can pr provide power for the hazards or whatever else is necessary. Now the other component in the box is just the charger. Now I decided to mount the charger in the car uh, so that I could charge the car whenever, wherever I go. Uh, some people will choose to leave it out of the car so that uh, they save on weight or space, but I elected to have it in there. And uh, this way, wherever I go, I can, I can charge up if I need to. So let's remove the floor of the trunk and I'll show you what's under here. So you see, this is uh, this is actually just a plastic bath bath mat to uh, that I put over the batteries, m mostly to protect them from stray tools that might drop on top of them. But uh, it's even ventilated, so it works out quite well. I had to cut the floor of the trunk out in order to uh, fit the batteries in here, and then I built a steel frame that is actually mounted to and bolted to the chassis itself so it's very sturdy. I did have to give up a couple of things in order to, to do this and that was there was a tool tray up here that held all the tools for the car uh, so I had to carry those elsewhere but then underneath the car this was actually where the spare tire was kept. Well, so I don't have a spare now. In the event that I get a flat I'm just going to have to call uh, AAA which is okay but uh, a small price to pay but now I've got uh, space for the uh, for the batteries back here. One of the concerns that people have with these batteries is that they may get out of balance. One battery might accept more charge than another or or give off more charge than the other and, and consequently they may they may go out of balance. And the fear is is that 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 imbalance can actually lead to the early death of one of the cells. So I'd like to point out I've got these two bus bars here. Now this is a, an idea that I just shamelessly stole from Jack Rickard. He, I saw the video that he'd done on the EV Porsche, and, and he'd done a similar thing, that, which I just thought was a great idea. I have a, uh, ones like this up in the front as well. So what we have is a wire that goes to the first battery in a series of four, and then the corresponding wire on the other side goes to the, uh, to the, other, the end of the other battery. So in this way, I can measure across just with a multimeter go across each one and I have a reading for the voltage across each set of four batteries and in this way if there's one battery in those in either of those packs that is high or low it'll show itself because that particular uh, set will be uh, different than the others but uh, like Jack what I found is this has become a tedious process because they're always the same no matter what no matter when I measure them they're always the same which is uh, uh, quite good because it means that uh, the batteries are doing their job and staying balanced. I'm not using a battery management system on these batteries and uh, I know a lot of people think that's kind of crazy but uh, so far it's uh, 
proved unnecessary. Like I mentioned, the batteries are just always in balance. They're always equal. Uh, time will tell, but uh, I believe that the, the best way to um, manage these batteries is rather th than through expensive electronics is just through uh, common sense in how you treat them. So the charger is set to charge the pack to 168 volts. That's 3.5 volts per cell. Once it gets to 168 volts, it starts to ramp down the current and then eventually turn off. Then what I find is uh, after a, a half an hour or so, the surface charge wears off and they've all leveled out to about 160. And then again, I can go through and measure all the batteries and I find that they're all the same. So at this point, I've seen no need whatsoever for a battery management system as long as you keep it within the window of uh, the sweet spot for where these batteries operate best. Don't overcharge them, don't overdrain them, and everything works out fine. The original model of the car was the 2.3, but uh, after all of the changes that I made to it, it was it was no longer a 2.3, so I thought I, I should rechristen it. So, uh, so I did. It's now the BMW Z3 EV. Um, I, I don't know how many people actually noticed that, but, uh, but it makes me happy. Now there are a couple of other things that I wanted to show you on the car, but I can't because they're obstructed. And one of those was the motor itself. It's directly underneath the uh, the batteries here. I I chose to use a, an 11 inch series wound DC motor by Netgain. So that's the Warp 11 motor. Originally I thought I'd use a 9 inch motor for this conversion, but once I started working with Netgain, I told them what my goals were. I wanted to be able to go on the freeway at freeway speeds. Uh, not worry about whether I can keep up, and also not worry about whether the motor would overheat. Uh, it became clear that an 11 inch motor was a better choice. So I opted for that. And uh, it's a shame I can't show, you to, show it to you because it, it really is a thing of beauty. But the other thing I did was I, I uh, put some aluminum sheets on the bottom of the car uh, under, to, uh, to uh, cover the tunnel where the drive line goes. And that was uh, for two reasons. One, I wanted to protect all of the wires that traverse the car running front to back. And the other was, is, uh, I was hoping that, to make the car more streamlined. So, now, I, I, don't, I don't know if it's more streamlined. I'd, I'd like to think so, but I haven't put it in a wind tunnel, so I can't tell you if it's more aerodynamic. But I'd like to think I didn't waste my time. But in either case, at least those wires are protected, and, uh, that, and that's important. Overall, uh, the conversion took me about one year. There was about five months of downtime waiting for parts. So, seven months of real work, and uh, it was very rewarding. I can tell you when I drove it out of the garage, it was one of the most satisfying things I've ever felt. But now that I'm driving it on a daily basis and just using it, it's been trouble-free and I absolutely love it. It's so much fun to drive. I intend to use it for years to come. Now, I, I'm not an, an electrical engineer uh, by trade, I just I work in the computer industry. And, uh, but I think this goes to show you that really, if, if you're willing to read up and, and uh, learn a few things and apply that knowledge, really anybody can do this. And I think anybody can do it to a fairly high standard. Now this is not the, the uh, highest quality conversion that I've seen, but I think you could see that it's certainly uh, uh, it is a good quality conversion, and, and, and if I can do that, I think that anybody can. So if uh, at some point you feel like you have uh, the, uh, uh, the desire to try this, I would encourage you to do it. It's been a fantastic project. If you have any questions for me, uh, feel free to email me. I'd be happy to answer anything that you can think of. So thanks for joining me, and uh, have a great day. So that was uh, Tim Cattalier in Chandler, Arizona. I must say, Tim, uh, uh, fantastic attention to detail on a nice car. Congratulations nice. on a great yeah. uh, Way to electric go, Tim. car conversion. And, um, and thanks for sharing that video with us. Uh, this guy's... Uh, He's in. Yeah, he's in. You're on. You're on the. Uh, <laughs> you're on the team, That's buddy. We'll uh, expect team. something every uh, every uh, Friday by uh, about nine in the morning. Is when, yeah, definitely before four so, o'clock. Meanwhile, I thought I'd introduce you. This is Trace Jessup. He's uh, been with us uh, four or five weeks now. I kept thinking he'd stomp off mad, as most people do that work for me, uh, except for Brian. Of course, it's his fifth time. But um, I wanted to introduce you to Trace. He's the one who uh, got us hooked up with Lucian and mm -hmm. got our yep. end plate done, yeah, went out yeah. there and 
kind of sat on him to yep. do that. Uh, he lived with him for a couple of days. <laughs> he, uh, he sort of beat me up on the uh, thrust bearing, and that's mm -hmm. in. And we have spinning wheels. And he has a $70 haircut he just got <laughs> yesterday, so I wanted you to see this. <clears throat> We're not all old and beat up. Uh, whiskey he will drinkers. be, <laughs> uh, but uh, he, like I say, he's new with us. He'll he'll be kind of bent over and sorrowful here pretty soon too. Um, we like hearing from our viewers. You don't really have to send me more stuff to drink. I make it here in the garage. Although we do have a guy that does a double backflip on a jet ski that's wanting to go electric. Okay. And he you sent me a bottle of Lagavulin. I, I, I can't really. I haven't got it yet, say? But, but I got noticed that it's 